And here we go. This is Flash Live and uh, 20% off tonight, Thursday, the 16th of May, 201 and 9. And we're going to cruise along to um, say hey, thanks to Grimner for all the help. As usual, and I think I got this back to normal where I can at least do a solo by myself without having to call Grimda. Help me connect the other voices, because I think things are being updated behind my back, so I got to buy some more stuff. And with that, I'm going to say hey to the bots and bodies tonight. <laughs> tonight. Today, this afternoon, in the reallibertymedia.com chat, people that, well, for some reason or another, they like the internet. And we got Barman, Beetle, Grimner, Moose Girl, Brackets DC, Anti, Anti underscore, Asmo, Asmo, hey Asmo, Beth Z, Chelsidoni, Echelon, Free Enslaved, Graham Z, IB Don C, Java Doctor 2, I haven't seen much typing out of Java lately. Probably having trouble with that bad knee. Or maybe he's out playing. Uh, we got Ponder Gander A. Vinny. Miss Kate. Back to the center of the board. Hmm. Rob Works. Trust no one. Vanna White. Vinny. Weather Dork. Woodman. F Phantom. And well then. Circle. Hello, honey. Cyborg. Noodle. Me. Frumpy. To Gromit, <laughs> Jays, Nines, Jays, Kiss, and Smart, like Hans, the new bot. Ah, thanks, Grim. Hey, Vinny. Yeah, well, tonight, I've got something cooking on my mind. It's not a new thing. It's an old thing. But something made me really aware of the idea that we're we're vibrating on all the wrong frequencies. So tonight's show is called we're, We Are Vibrating on All the Wrong Frequencies. I mean, how do you prove that to somebody? I mean, what... Hmm, that would be a little different than, hey, this is black and this is white. Because you're talking about something that is so vague. <laughs> I mean, school... <laughs> education yeah i'm sure there's a lot of bankers out there that had to go to vibrating class <laughs> so where would you learn in a you know education system in the first damn place where would you go to learn about vibration hmm should think think that science would have led people down that road but nah cuz i've been paying attention to the interwebs and you know what People are more interested in um, cars that run on batteries uh, and robots that can give you a blowjob than they are about the frequency that the energy that's running this shit is delivered to you on. And Larry Woods taught me this great explanation for it, but for whatever reason, it's it doesn't connect with everybody. And Rob... Rob kind of pushed for a bit, but n nobody picks up on it. It's just such an obscure way to talk, I think, because of the 60s. You know, dude, why is Mr. Manson vibrating? Well, yeah, of course he's vibrating, you freaking idiot. But we were taught in the 60s to make fun of that concept by, you know, hijacking it and putting drugs in front of it. You vibrate when you're on drugs. No, you, you vibrate when you're breathing. Um, hmm. vibrations in all, you know, any physical sense that I have that I consider physical. Well, I guess eyesight would be, but I don't have good eyesight, so we'll go with other shit. But, um, hmm. well, when you hear shit, we know that's vibration. But when we touch things, we're not ta taught about the vibration involved in that particular exchange and the other day I was listening to a link about it and it just strikes me as odd how 
we can have it explained to us, this life thing, this physical shit, in so many different freaking ways. And it doesn't matter how it's told, it always draws us some kind of audience to hear about it, <laughs> whether it's true or not. So, hmm. Now, I believe that the uh, table is there because that keeps me alive so I don't walk into tables. You know, it's like... Uh, hmm. The difference between uh, believing in a religion or not believing in a religion. Because this is something physical. You can come up with a physical proof to prove your physical shit. But your mental shit, not so much. That, mm, that you can believe that all, you, all day and all night. and Things might not change. And if they did change the way you want them to, what would it have to do with what you believe? Hmm. I don't think that's how this works either. I'm not quite sure how to explain how I see how this works because it works so badly. It's it's as though this group of men are doing something so badly that when something goes right, it's weird. And that's what we call daily life on planet Earth with our fellow citizens and citizenettes. <laughs> We could argue about being good citizens, too, if we want to. Let's see if I can inspire some smart-ass comments from the RealLibertyMedia.com chat and get one of these crazy people to say something about my topic. And my topic is, we're vibrating on the wrong frequencies. But I don't know how to prove it, Rob. You might know how to prove it. You know more about all that electrical stuff, you know, in detail. I just got this vague idea, and that's enough. I'm convinced. The math is just more shit for me to deal with. Uh, hmm, I guess it's the, I don't have that instant everything mentality about life. Like, oh, I have to know how something works so that if it ever breaks down, I can fix it myself. Nah, I'm not like that. I was when I was younger because things were, uh, they were made out of way better shit, for one. And when you fix something, it stayed fixed. It didn't break 20 minutes later because it was made out of plastic. Mm. I wonder what happened. Oh, yeah. We got hijacked by oil. And people are, are they don't see that electricity is just another version of the same old song. Because they're going to control the freaking vibration that you receive it on. So... It might be nice to be conserving fuel, and it might be nice to have enough money to buy a, a battery-powered car and all that shit. But, one, if something goes wrong with it, you can't fix it. And, number two, you're still dependent on oil any, no matter how you look at it, unless you, you got some kind of solar thing. And that's not going to catch on. People aren't going to put that kind of... That kind of... Uh, uh, interest into something burnt out of human being a long time ago, maybe 20, 30, 40 years back. People just didn't care. Stop, stop being interested in learning how to do things. They're, a lot of them are very, very uh, dull. It's like the, uh, <laughs> like they grew up on another planet than the one I grew up on. So maybe, maybe their time travel's true or uh, alien life forms from the another planet. They're surrounding us and making us obey their rules through trickery and deceit, just like in the film. You know, what, what was that called? Where the guy put on the glasses and saw the thing, saw the creatures for what they truly were. And, uh, I forget what it was called, but it was, uh, every, everybody that's an anarchist will know the, know the damn movie. Rod, uh, Roddy, Roddy, Ronnie Piper or something like that. Really bad acting. Really bad script. The idea was freaking brilliant, but it's like they they did it on a twenty dollar bill. You know, let, hey, you guys get to split this twenty dollar bill if you do this movie today. <laughs> it was one of those, and well, the message was so freaking good they had to make it that bad so it wouldn't be remembered. And on top of the you know the mind of the daily guy, or <laughs> what was that other one? Network. That was pretty clever. But see, here here we sit, and we have the people that fuck us all equally. Uh, now they're indoctrinating the the 
fags out there, I don't gays or whatever the fuck this LB queer queer Jew Q shit is. And uh, Canada's going to make them a coin. <laughs> and I thought, wow, you know, now the government is really fucking everybody equally. They're not picking and choosing anymore. You don't have to belong to their club. Just belong to a club and they'll tax your club. Somehow, some way. Because <laughs> that's, uh, this society's out of control. These people need to be either stopped or at least minimized, you know, to keep them to a fucking minimum. Because this is like 5G's coming, people. <laughs> that should bring civil war. If there's anything going on in the world right now that would make America look at itself instead of some other fucking country, it's going to be the 5G. Yeah. People are going to go, hey, wait a minute. This stuff isn't good for us, is it? Hmm. And then when they find out that they can't do anything in court to stop it, well, what are your choices? Nothing you can do to, in court to stop it. The only court case that we, you'll be able to file would be, I don't like the color of the shit that they built it you know, in. It clashes with my drapes. So chances are when it goes to court, nobody's going to give a shit what you're complaining about. And life will progress forward. For average Joe. <laughs> average Joe. I wonder what average Joe means. Because um, <laughs> uh, there's a character on the reallibertymedia.com that is, well, he's rather fond of himself. And he will tell you all the time how he knows this and how he knows that. And the rest of us are just, you know, things to be dealt with because he has a job to do and i thought that was the very person i was trying to avoid <laughs> so it, it's it's kind of fun to be able to to slap the idiot around when he when he shows up and starts talking his nonsense but we all have a sick side i always say that you know if we all carried on you know just uh <laughs> As we do for the rest of our days, it, at least this, it couldn't get any worse than it already is. Whatever the worst is, because I'm laughing at this stuff. I, I don't take it to heart and get upset and cry myself to sleep or any of that. But I pay attention when it's happening, because, you know, in the moment, life is one thing. And then an hour later, it's forgotten. Doesn't matter anymore. That was in. Yeah, Rowdy Roddy Piper. And it, he, he says, and it was great acting, writing, and directing. Okay, Grimner, uh, 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 I, okay, I happen to be a movie snob, if you will. <clears throat> and my judgment, you know, of, of a good story is one thing. A lot of shitty movies, I think, are shitty movies. Great story to it. And nothing personal, but, nah, that was so over, it was like slap, I, <laughs> It was such on the verge of con, on on the, just on the edge of comic, that it it people should be taking that seriously, and they weren't because he did a, such a slap sick you know slap stick job of the film. That's all. I'm being a judgmental prick. I can do that. <laughs> I don't have to know what I'm talking about to have an opinion about it. Just have to have seen the movie once or seven times. <laughs> Because it's, it's really a good film. I mean, but I just don't think it was well made. I think the film was good. But <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Looking down my Jewish nose at your at the Jews making movies. Because that wasn't the Jews making movies. That's why the quality was so bad. If the quality is really good, the message is really fucked up. You really shouldn't pay attention to that stuff. But we do. Yeah. Oh, I read something interesting today. I heard that America is going to go preemptively strike Iran so that Iran don't strike the Jews. And, uh, wow, you must be proud. I, I can only say that. I'm sure glad I don't live in a place where the government acts that fucking way. <laughs> you know, but, oh, I guess if you read enough of this bullshit on the on. You know, on the internet and the newspapers and watch news and whatnot. You'd be fucking convinced, oh, Iran wants to build a nuclear bomb to attack Israel. 
Well, I don't know. I think Israel's surrounded by enough Arabs as it is that they don't need a nuclear bomb to reach them. But <laughs> this is my idea, you know. Uh, and when you're surrounded by an enemy, on I mean, surrounded, there's nowhere to go but water. <laughs> Keeping other big fucking bullies, you know, uh, attentive to your fear of being annihilated would be a really good business move if if you think it through. You know, hey, let's put the Jews right in the middle of the fucking Middle East. Right in the center. Yeah, there's no better place for Israel than right there. <laughs> yeah, let's put it on the water, too. Oh, three sides, you're out. And <laughs> let them fight. That's what they're doing. Let them fight. But the Jews cannot be persecuted in court. They're above the law, but everybody else is, of you know, they're all the uh, poor victims. But they're called the aggressors by the press and the laws and all this shit. We're getting screwed. <laughs> we'll get lied to so badly. And then I talk about it and probably say it too much, but for fuck's sake, it's, it's like, how could you not look at this mess that we're in over and over? I mean, I, I'm 59, so this is from Vietnam to now. And I wasn't even one to pay attention, you know. I just knew, hey, because people talked about it. It was newspapers. I read newspapers. And then as I <laughs> grew out of newspapers, I actually went to the comic strips in my late 20s. And that was the whole thing about the newspaper. I wanted to, because I got a, a, an ability to copy other people's artwork. And sometimes it doesn't matter the style. Some people's style I can't do, but not very often. Anyway, so I would sit and sp instead of reading the paper, I would copy the cartoons and make them bigger and have some fun with shit like that. And it, overhear other people talk about it. Listen to it in the bars, but as far as knowledge, nah, I don't I don't think I was a walking textbook of uh, military this and that. But the one thing I was informed of early is the American government lies to get theirself into wars. And I, that was made clear to me because of, um, what was that thing? Pearl Harbor, the one with the Japs. And like, oh yeah, they were they were attacked out of nowhere. Oh yeah, sure, sure, right, right, right. That was a, a long-range plan, just like everything else, to get America up to its nipples into that freaking war. Because the population was against war, just like in World War One, But the government sold out, and then they made it, Hey, you either go to war, or we'll put your ass in jail. So you're either a patriot or a prisoner. So, to me, you're either one's the same fucking thing. What difference does it make? And some people are more afraid of prison than they are of going over and shooting at strangers. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's a fucked up world. I hope they did that in World War II, too. Mm -hmm. They did it in Vietnam, Korea, North Korea. What was it? Yeah, I guess we were in fight. I don't know which career we were fighting. <laughs> I'm not that guy. I'm not the war guy. I think you have to talk to the, the bot. Give me a second here. Ah, my elixir during the 20% off podcast where, oh, I don't know. I just felt like bashing the Jews for a minute. Might as well get it out of me while I can before the internet says I can't do it anymore. If you keep doing that, we won't, po we won't put this out. Yeah, right, whatever. But that's where we're at. People want to tell you what to say and when to say it and how to say it and who to say it to, by God and country, because they don't want to hear it. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't think I feel that way so much about too many people. But, eh, that's life, isn't it? You know, what's what's the bright side of this, though? At least we know a few people that aren't full of shit up to their eyebrows. That's the, the best thing about um, the chat room situation, you know. The online room is... Uh, when you read people's stuff, I mean, if there's, what would you call it? 
if they're not bouncing around from one, one place to the other, one extreme of, of the same idea in over a six-month period of time, <laughs> and at least they stay stable and uh, don't misrepresent themselves too bad, which I guess we all do that at some point. Because typing and, you know, memories change over time, I think, too. The older you get, you either get more uh, tough or you get softer. There doesn't seem to be a lot of choice in that one. Wear and tear, you know. Because uh, the body wears down. But the brain, I don't know about that. Now, I've read some horrible shit about, oh, the effects of cannabis on the brain, blah, 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 blah. And now I'm going, hey, wait a minute. Why, why were they telling me all that? This stuff is bad for you. And, and I don't think it was medical journals writing I was reading. It was probably like newsprint and uh, stuff on the internet that I've seen since. But uh, all that bad shit they told us about cannabis. And here we are. And it's legalized. And it's this legalized. And the seems to me like the public is so completely out of... Uh, time to deal with anything in a fashion that would make a difference that they don't care it, out of sight out of mind that that's how i was about you know political things and war and i was just out of all that shit but i would think that people that you know are in school <laughs> no never mind that was a bad example can't stay ring a bell let me see my wife gave me something she said hey you might want to read this on your podcast tonight. Let me open it up and find out what it is. And I had a copy open, but I closed it. Wait a minute. Um, a Stalin, a Stalin, a Stalin. Here we go. Opening it up. The thing right now. I'll post a copy of it. And she says there's video to it. So I'm hoping the damn thing doesn't go live. Video opening on me. And make me a... Uh, Seem like I can't control my computer, <laughs> which I've had a little trouble doing over the last couple of months, telling you. If you've been hanging with the 20% uh, off podcast, you might have got a few shows that were just, uh, well, recorded badly, I would say. Shit happens and uh, just not good with the software and the hardware and this where and that where. I'm not a good producer. But the guy that helps me out, boy, oh, Grimner, whenever I need something, Grim always comes in and says, Hey, put the team viewer on. I'll fix it, you meathead. And uh, I'm going to read a little of this. I don't know how much of it, but uh, I opened it up when I seen it earlier. And it seemed like a pretty interesting little bit of knowledge to entertain the mind. So hold on one second here and let me get to the... It's called Wild at Heart. How one woman and her husband live out in the woods. And it says here... For seven, oh, for seven years, Miriam Lancewood and her husband Peter have lived a nomadic life. She is the hunter... And he is the cook. Now they're walking across Europe to Turkey with a tent and little else. Stephanie Marsh meets them to hear why. Miriam Lancewood has been living off-grid in the wild for seven years now. And she can still pinpoint the exact moment she knew she had truly broken with social norms. It was when the idea was born to wash my hair with urine, she recalls. She had she had just started living wild in the New Zealand Alps when she developed a persistent dandruff problem. Luckily, she remembered reading about an ancient remedy. I sat in the sun for a horrible, stinky half hour to let it soak in. I'd expected Miriam to look bedraggled, maybe with a couple of teeth missing. But she's immaculate and smiling broadly. Her teeth shiny white. She usually cleans them with ash. No dandruff. Legs shaven. She smells of campfire. 
Oh, Cirque. This is a Cirque story, all right. Anyway, she is powerfully built, almost the double of Sarah Connor from The Terminator. A Dutch Sarah Connor. She was born in Holland. Her husband, Peter, proudly tells me she could beat most men in a fight. Miriam is the hunter, and I am the cook. Wait, and I'm the cook. Okay, it's a little buzz here. I think I'm going to find my stogie. Hold on, let me get my stogie thing. And as my buddy Vinny would say, it's damn near 420 some freaking where. Who cares? Light them up if it's 420 or not. I don't I don't live by the clock unless I absolutely have to. No choice, have to do the clock thing. Okay, now, where was I? Ah, uh, blah, blah, blah. her husband Peter proudly tells me, blah, 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 blah. She, she's much stronger than me. Women are better shots, he says, and they're more careful, adds Miriam. They are less driven by trophy hunting. They have less of a need to prove themselves. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe if there ain't a bunch of other women around, because, man, get two women in the same room together and yoinks. Anyway, a <laughs> little, little satire from the reader. <laughs> okay, back to the story, folks. Five years into their nomadic life in New Zealand, Miriam decided to write a book about her experiences. The couple have since relocated to Europe, where they're spending the year walking to Turkey. Part two of their live stream of never returning to civilization. So here we are in Belgium, three hours west of Sofia, upstream from a river where the couple can bathe, sitting around a campfire in a wood. The photographer met up with me earlier in their journey in Bavaria. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been in, invited for dinner and Peter is standing over a cast iron pot containing a bubbling bean stew. There are foraged wrinkly plums to start. <laughs> mm. It's an exciting occasion for them. They haven't seen another human being for 11 days. It's 5 p.m. What have they been doing all day? Nothing much. Waiting for you. In the first few months of their primitive life, Miriam thought she'd go mad with boredom, but she soon fell in sync with nature. Half of any given day is spent collecting fire food, firewood. They sleep as long as it's dark. They have never had more energy. It's a stark contrast to when Miriam was still working as a special needs teacher in New Zealand. Those were grim days. I was always stressed and so bored and depressed about thinking I'm going to do this forever and ever. She's learned so much since she's been out here, but one question remains unanswered. Where are all the women? <laughs> okay. I, I, I. Anyway, yeah, well, I guess I'll keep going with this. Hey, let me check on the RLM and see if anybody's still there. <clears throat> that was a strange little tidbit for you to enjoy. Wrote, I mean, wow. The women are in charge now. Ooh, big time. So, fuck it. Let them do it. We didn't do so good. <laughs> I don't have a problem with all that. Uh, whoever's in charge bullshit, whether they got a dick or not. Nah, that, that doesn't change the outcome. That's just another part of the freaking illusion. You know, all that shit was is so they could make tax slaves out of women, too. It was never about equal rights or fair share or whoever the best man is wins. It's it's a game. It's, it's a scam. And the reason I would say it shows itself to me as a game, because, you know, as we all know, when you when you play a game, why there's rules in a game because hey don't you dare break the rules in this game but wait a minute this is a game that we're playing where 
Nobody really tells us what the rules are. Uh-oh, Mike. Something could not be retrieved, it says here. Uh, hold on. I guess I'll go back to the start. Maybe I did it wrong. Oh, wait a minute. Let me... All right. I might have I might have done something backwards. Let me try it one more time because I'm posting that again. But yeah, it's hard to. I had a feeling to check up on the chat, so I I did that. But difficult to read chat and talk at the same time. Now I'm multi posting. See if this one works. Yo, oh, I must have entered the wrong. Yeah, I do that. Ah, uh, my my fingers are bad. I will have to send them to re-education camp because they're uh, they're just not functioning in the right. They're not vibrating on the right frequencies, just like everything else. And I don't know if there's any reason to blame anything for it, so to speak. It's just being aware that the reason we function so badly is because it's done on purpose, and the people that are being uh, put in positions of decision in the public eye and all this crap they call government, that's a bunch of crap. There's that so far from real, it's not believable. But we don't know that because we're judging that by what we see. And we don't see a whole fucking lot. And then if you consider what you read seeing shit, nah, I don't think it translates the same way to the eye. To, uh, as the eye, what you visually can look at is that's why they use the TV on you. Mm. And I would say they use the the uh, internet as well t to get some kind of message, no matter what information you're looking at, whether it exposes the fraud of government or praises the fraud of government, it's still delivered to us from somebody. So I think whoever controls the somebody that the in information is sent through, they're the ones that are doing all this. Whatever all this is. So that we have people that live, that believe, destroying people that might destroy other people is a good idea. Whoa. You know, it, it's the threat of they might do it if they get this. So... If it looks like they're getting that, let's just attack them because they might do this. That's kind of a chicken shit way to be. I mean, I I don't know. But that's how the laws all seem to be running these days. You know, they, they decide you're guilty of something and that's the end of that. I don't know how you're ever going to prove you're not. Oh, no, you didn't confuse me. I'm the one that's... Con I was born confused, Graham. Shit. It's one... It's... I think it's the most endearing quality I have to Cirk is that half the time I don't know what the fuck's going on because there's so much shit that I just don't care about. I don't pay any fucking attention to it. And then when I see it, I've heard it somewhere. I don't know. Didn't get my attention enough to remember it. So it must not have been that good. I'm an old guy, 59,000 years old over here in Denmark. Little kitties out there in radio land. That's right. Hmm? Hmm? And I'm I'm the guy that uh, I didn't learn how to smoke rolling my own cigarettes either. So I'm in a different kind of world over here where, you know, what's normal here is obscure at home. And what's obscure at home is normal here, like drinking in the street. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, the popo. That's right. I was, forgot to give you the popo report. <coughs> And I think I've reported two popo sightings in the last eight or so months. And they were both in a, like a week. And uh, I was I, I was enjoying this because it was at the train depot where all the drinking guys are. So this is what I mean. You think the cops don't know these guys are standing there drinking. He, they know. There's just nothing that anybody needs to do about anything that's happening. It's... Uh, this society just kind of seems to police itself and sort itself out. And I'm sure there's lots of folks in RLM that have that same situation in the smaller places. But then when you get into your bigger places where you've got cops and all that, real cops with guns and they want to shoot at you. And 
take away your shit. Well, you know, your car looks like it might do a crime. We're going to have to asset forfeiture. Forfeiture you. For, how do you say that? Asset forfeiture you. I don't even know how to say that to somebody. That would be so ridiculous. But they take your shit and they charge the shit with the crime. Yep, your money is going to be held because it's the thing that... Well, then you got to fight them in court to uh, get your money back. Uh, let's see what Grimner has to say. He says, Flash somebody. He's more of who does the U.S. NATO Rothschilds want to attack. Yeah, oh yeah, and steal resources from. And how do they make it seem uh, like they are dangerous and must be annihilated for the good of the rest of the planet? Well, remember in the 70s when the Iranian kids took hostages and, and uh, Carter was, he was not a big um, violent president. He was probably the, out of all the presidents of my lifetime, he was the least violent one of all of them. So there's still a lot of military act action took place in this you know in his four years but the one thing he didn't do try to get the hostages back and uh when reagan got nominated or elected i think the hostages were released the day he took office because ronnie he was gonna go in there and he was gonna fuck them up no kidding and uh the oh, people were not, Ronnie was nobody to fuck with. He had already been a governor of California a couple times. He was a big Republican guy, I think. Uh, this is like uh, the my when I was 20 years old, all, all this was going on. So I was about as close to it as you know a Mount Moth is to a flame. Huh. But I didn't really know it. I think it was just kind of not interesting enough at the time. But I still saw and heard what was happening around me. And that was one of the things that got my attention. Hostages, American hostages in Iran. And all the Americans were all, well, fuck Iranians. Da, da, da. And I'm telling you to this day, every Iranian human life, carbon-based life form I've ever met was fine. And I met some in California, and I met one here in Denmark. And same response. It's like, no, this is our government's doing this shit. Well, me and you, I got no part of that. And then we're in Denmark in the first place, so this is like neutral zone. You want to carry your religion around, you better put it in a bag, pal. <laughs> I don't think it will fly too good with the uh, Danish fellas around here, my friend. But that's my opinion because that's how little outside influence there is in this little tiny crap hole. People don't come here except to uh, tourist. And I think their claim to fame in history was they made um, cannonballs here back in the day. And there's still, um, there's an old fire, fire, uh, what would you call it, firehouse? I'm not even sure if it's a house. It might be a, like a storage unit. And they keep these old time 1930-something fire trucks. I think I posted a picture on uh, realliberty.org of... If I haven't, I will. <clears throat> but I've got a couple of shots of the the fire trucks driving around. They do like a little tourist thing, and it's just cheap, just to to pay the pay for the thing to be done. And uh, you get to ride around in the little town village down the main street, and it's uh, I guess it's just the child's thing where you like fire trucks. I never grew out of not liking the fire truck, but the old stuff is. Hmm. Now, I'm not sure what took me to all that, but I posted the link that Cirque put up for me. And, well, it's, see, it's nice to know that, that there's people out there that don't give a flying fuck about what we're doing. Because that's why I try to... My version of is it doesn't matter what I think about any fucking thing. Things happen before you can make a judgment on what they are. But they want to... You know, we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. Uh, uh, let's see what Grimner's saying. Flash is in the neutral zone, just outside of the Klingons' territory. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, EU Brussels is close to here. 
I think, that, yeah, the Queen of Denmark and all that, yeah, and all that shit pulls a lot of weight. Even during World War II, you know, Hans has a different version of it, how to explain it. But Denmark was not physically invaded. They were invaded with flyers during World War II. There was no activity going on here. The Germans used it for freaking vacations. And they has got to have something to do with that bloodline queen thing. But how do you prove it? History went the way it went. And then there, there's all these different people's opinions about, oh, I read this and I read that and I read, 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 read. We don't know. We're just assuming that somebody didn't lie to us about fucking something somewhere. <laughs> maybe they got the date right. Who knows? Or maybe a name or two. But I sure still, I still to this day, like right now, instead of sending, <coughs> excuse, <coughs> excuse me, instead of sending uh, destroyers and freaking, uh, what else, aircraft carriers to the Middle East, why don't Donald Trump, you know, and what's his name, old, uh, whoever's in charge of the freaking Iranians, the li- head, the head honcho of Iran, let's call him that. And him and and uh, old uh, Trump meet up in Dubai at some fancy schmancy hotel, and they have a no holds barred fight to the death. And whoever wins, that's the winner, and that's the thing we'll do. Or shut the fuck up and leave us all alone. And <laughs> they won't stop fucking talking. It's my talking doesn't hurt anyone. I have opinions that are not popular with average Joe, maybe, or, you know, like my outlook on labor, how they treat people to pay them money for what. At least if you have fun doing something for money, then it's not so bad. But, you know, if if you got stuck doing something that you don't enjoy, then... And there's a lot of that. I hear a lot. Or... Even worse, there's so many um, talents and trades that are obsolete now because America doesn't manufacture fucking anything. Not to mention it costs so damn much to regulate and ensure everybody's fucking safety so that you don't kill them. Because, you know, everybody in business is out to make some inferior piece of shit for you to buy so that you hurt yourself when you use it. And that's how we're, you know, that's how we seem to look at shit. Their courts are full of problems. Court, 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 court. Instead of just making something out of good material that lasts forever, which we could do if we wanted to, and have it at a reasonable price, which we could do if we really wanted to. Well, no, no, no. We've got America and England and Denmark and all these places. And you know what they all have in common is they all hate the Arabs. You know why they hate the Arabs? Their banking sucks. Their banking, they don't charge interest. They go, well, nope, you pay back. Well, they make it, uh, they pay it back with profitable shit, but not necessarily like an interest rate. So they've got a different program, and it's not so punishing. If you uh, should fall behind on an Arab loan from your Arab friend in your Arab body, then things can be worked out. Now, we do usury, which is Jew-based, and the Arabs don't. That's what all this freaking trouble is about. It's not about the fucking oil. The oil is an excuse so that they can get the public behind them so they can go in there and do their pretend fighting for the Rothschilds so the bankers can make money off of everybody and all the things that come from it you got building you got building buildings to destroy the buildings then you got building weapons to destroy the buildings how many layers of this crap are there all the jobs that it takes to make an army and supply it and feed it and by the time you're finished when are you going to watch tv and enjoy a nice uh, comedy show you know you're not you're working your fucking self into a hole and and it's all done based on a bunch of absolute nonsense. <laughs> but that's not the way the news people tell it. 
suicide bombers and this, that, and the other fucking thing. But they never bothered to, hey, do you, you know how badly you're being fucked out of your, your fiat money? That there is a debt, $21 trillion debt, and <laughs> they don't even bother to try to explain what about the debt for the interest on every dollar ever printed that was never printed? They don't print the interest. So where does it come from <laughs> to pay the interest on the debt? Now, if you're in a cycle like that and you're still believing that your uh, your economy is real, uh, hmm, well, I don't know. I, I don't have that kind of a problem. But, see, if it's if it collapses... At least I'm prepared for that. I know, hey, this is all bullshit and it can end in a fucking blink of an eye for no fucking reason whatsoever. And I've found that out because of hurricanes and earthquakes. Because when the power goes out and you're isolated and everything around you's in shambles, <laughs> the police don't have no interest in you. And <laughs> that's, you know, all of a sudden the whole thing shifts and it changes. And people are nicer to each other because uh, that's nature, you know. But the shit that we're in with all this electricity and waves and vibrations and resonance and crap like that, all bombarding us all at the same time. So it's got to be <clears throat> throwing the human being off balance a lot. Not to mention the shit they're spraying us on uh, with from the sky. I, I read somebody had their their kids blood tested and they're recommending this to other people to find out what was in their children's blood and there were traces of aluminum inside a human being in the bloodstream how did it get there what was the source of this aluminum maybe the kid was snorting aluminum with his friends mom what do you think because you know that's probably what average joe would come up with you know what's aluminum is that like a new drug uh i never heard of it before uh, <laughs> i know there's video clips to that kind of stupid shit and it just whether it's true or not i don't know i've i have no idea i can't really remember the last time uh i was around somebody that didn't know what a, a giraffe looked like <laughs> But I saw it on I saw it on the internet. So <laughs> who knows? It, maybe it was just a prank. Everything and let, <laughs> let's believe all this shit that you see. I don't know. I can't believe all of it, but I know that the stuff that I do believe usually makes me um, uncomfortable. You know, it's not the the fun stuff that I'm talking about so much as like you know fractional reserve banking and inoculations you know the good stuff mm. Mm. yeah and tuesday i was i was remarking on somebody doing a, a link about that inoculation so it was grim on on uh grim leftovers and i could not believe my ears when i heard all that stuff but Daily, I read it on, you know, I read it on minds a lot. There's a lot of anti-vaxxers. <laughs> and there's even people that come out and say two-faced shit like, well, I'm not against inoculations, but I, wait a minute. You can't be half, you know, like you're halfway in or you're halfway out. No, you're either in this or you're out of this. This is some very important uh, science that they're fucking with and they're scared just massacring people with it and i don't know if how could you say nobody knows the truth up up above a certain they gotta know how could they not know but they're claiming oh well they never did a study so these are well these are just happenstance results and i'm thinking well with or without the study that the concept is insane i'm gonna get you sick so that you can Build up an immunity to being sick. That way, in the future, you don't get sick. Uh, and here's the best part. They did this with a childhood disease that any kid should be able to survive without any problem and get through in about 10 days. And fine, you just keep them home. 
and they're a little miserable with some bumps for a couple of days, about a week. And in 10 days, you're completely through the cycle of whatever the fucking thing is. And then you'll never, ever get sick again from that. Now, they've managed to talk us into a preemptive strike on your childhood disease so that you don't have to be bothered with your kid getting sick when the kid gets the disease because we're going to give them an inoculation so that won't happen. Isn't that kind of like the opposite? <laughs> I don't, I, common sense just seems to elude the most intelligent people. You know, like the seatbelt. Oh, there's a brilliant idea. Hey, I'm going to strap myself into the inside of a bomb and I'm going to do 80 miles an hour in it. <laughs> Damn, at least if you don't have the seatbelt on, you might survive going through the windshield, but that seatbelt's going to probably break your freaking neck in the steering wheel. <laughs> Who knows? You know, whiplash! Your head might go through the windshield, but your body will stay in the car because uh, you had your seatbelt on. And that's, well, I had much to do with paramedics for a while and learned much about the hmm, the other side of bad drivers and drunk drivers and people that were chronically ill or not, or, or abusing the system, let's say that. And there was a lot of that to waste, people wasting the medical people's time with garbage and by law, they had to do, they had procedures and protocols because the one time that they're not lying is the time that matters legally, not not that they're constantly fucking with you. But this time it could be different. This time Lucy's not going to move that ball. I promise. Go on and try to kick it. But mm -hmm. life, liberty, the pursuit of puppiness. Did you guys know that it used to be the pursuit of property and it was changed over the years to the pursuit of happiness? Now, what the hell is the pursuit of happiness? You know, what if it makes me happy to go set your house on fire and burn it to the ground and watch you go up in it? Is that what, see, that's just a, another wordplay distraction fucking con game this government plays on you you know they took your pursuit for property is done it's been done since they changed that <laughs> they change these words on a document and then they take a physical action and they go see in court well we we told you it was right here in the paperwork all you had to do is read it well yeah if you're a lawyer and you can understand it so hmm Many scams in the world going on right now that don't seem to be changing anytime too soon. But, hey, we're vibrating on all the wrong frequencies in every area of life. And then I open up some links because I wanted to see how certain um, vegetables were, were um, started. So I'm opening up the link. And I'm watching this guy is doing his explanation and his pitch. And he's trying to make money. You know, he's trying to do business with people. He's not doing this out of the kindness of his heart, really. You've got to remember that. But in their video is more honesty and truth from somebody showing you how, with their, you know, their own hands. This is how you plant it. This is how, how far you put it in the soil. And uh, what it was, it was a guy doing uh, potatoes in a five-pound bucket. And you do it outside, but potatoes, you got to dig them out of the dirt. But so he showed, he showed you how to grow about, I think he said it should yield about 20 pounds of potatoes per bucket, per five-gallon bucket. And he recommended the ones they use in the bakeries to deliver icing. He said, you know, they get, those things, are they're safe. And there's a number on the bottom of, of them to show you what which ones to stay away from, which ones will poison your potatoes. And it was pretty informative. So, and and I didn't watch the very end one, you know, where he shows you, ah, oh, these are the finished potatoes. Because I want to see what, what's going to happen. I'm going to try it and just see if I can pull it off. Following the guy's directions. 
Because I figured even a five-year-old can pull a potato out of dirt without direction. I think Hannah could figure that one out. He'd go, Hannah, potato me. <laughs> oh, that was probably not a good joke. But my dog is my dog. Anyway, where are we at tonight and 20% off? Because I haven't been vibrating so well through the show tonight. My vibrating level is probably just as uh, erratic and, what would you call it, confusing as normal. Life, liberty, and property came from France, I think. The pursuit clause amends the idea. That was from Vinny. Yeah, well, that's what I read. Of course, here we go. You read this stuff that's written from other stuff that, you can't get the original shit anymore. We're all in the 21st century. Who who owns a book? Who who would consider a book more believable than an internet site? Because they can see the video. But, you know, fuck that. What about the written word before this had a value? And now, I think the internet's being used to cheapen it so that people are just constantly confused or apathetic about what they're seeing. Because there's not a lot of good stuff to look at. Ooh. We're going to go to war with Venezuela because they're socialists. We're going to go to war with... Uh, which was Iran because they might attack Israel. So we have to go in there and stop them. Whew. Reruns, reruns, reruns. How, so to get the generation somehow, I guess through school, I, maybe that's my, uh, my inability to connect to society and feel part of it is my lack of interest in school. So I, I never really got into that group, you know, that, ooh, we're so wonderful. Uh, hmm, I don't know. Whatever bit of dirt you're born on doesn't make any different than me if in the long run i mean i'm here i see people here every day they don't seem any different than i am they just talk different they don't behave any different they walk down the street or they drive a car or they ride a bicycle oh well where's the big difference at oh we don't speak the same language okay well how many people do you walk by every day and do you go talk to every one of them (laughs) <laughs> I mean, how many of those people that you encounter in a day do you dread having to talk to um wow i used to i remember certain situations like the hamburger story it's always been a personal favorite but that's just one example of many where uh I went to spend some dollars and the person on the receiving end did not understand their job their job was explained to them differently than it, than it was when it was me doing something like it or that. I would have done it differently. And, uh, hmm. I don't know. Some people like to insist what you do. And other people like to just do shit. I happen to feel I'm one of the people that just likes to do shit. I don't think I tell other people what to do. Well, maybe Hansel because Hansel's a target. That's a different story. I mean, like, I never come on there and tell, Rob, it's time for us to take over the world. Arm up. We're going north. No, what for? If Rob wants to arm up and go north, he ain't going to need anybody to go with him. <laughs> He's not insane. Uh, when people group up and do that, that's that's when shit goes wrong. That's the whole point. <laughs> war. There's no fucking such thing as war. <laughs> It doesn't even make sense to me that I I should have a a, a deeper to hatred against a, a people thousands and thousands of miles away from me doing this and doing that. Well, I don't. I have a a despise for the game. You know, the people are people, and the people that I encounter on the financial level I'm on, they're just like me. I mean, in the long run. In hustlers and bustlers, I spot them 10 feet down the road. They avoid me. <laughs> they, they know. When I go to the store and they got the kids um, collecting for this 
movement and that program and this, that, and the other. They don't even make eye contact with me when I walk in the store because of the hair. They know I'm not, they just know. They've been trained to identify their, their market and they look for certain kind of people. And I watch them when I'm um, waiting for stuff and I watch the kids talk to see what they're doing. And it's like a recipe. It worked in America when I was doing it with truck tires on a telephone. And it works in Denmark in a grocery store when you're pitching somebody something in the grocery store to see if they want to you know, purchase it. Because people don't just stand around with you know notebook pads and, and talk to strangers with a badge on their shirt for nothing. <laughs> this, commerce, that's commerce. It's, it's not for anybody's benefit. That, that's what I was trying to get on, on to that about the other night. It's like, here we got all these multi-billionaires and they got all this money. But you never see one of them start their own city. No, they go join one that's already, you know, already existing because all the money's corrupt and then there's no point to starting something new. We just add on to the piece of shit that's already there. That's why you don't have anything get improved or changed. The only, the only big thing going on is this Elon Musk idiot and his freaking space traveling shit. Why doesn't he just take a billion dollars and start a fucking city? Let, you know, show people. This is what I got. And this is, you know, you can be a part of it. And we'll make you a business or that, that, something, nothing. Casinos. <laughs> Trump. Trump wasn't even given a license to operate a casino in Las Vegas. <laughs> That's how corrupt this fucker is. He, he's in such debt. In, in in layers, in different ways that you can't identify this. It takes 20 years to unravel the, all the paperwork this shit goes through. And and he, and he built this hotel in, in Las Vegas. And it's beautiful and it's made out of every freaking expensive thing on the planet and all that shit. But <laughs> what caught my attention is I watched this link to hear what he had to say about it. And he says, and we, we plan to make a hotel here where uh, gambling wasn't an issue. Oh, hold on. Sorry about that, folks. My dog needed to be screamed at briefly. <laughs> Hannibal the cannibal. She lives up to her name. Anyway, so, yeah, so Trump's trying to tell, tell whoever he's talking to on this interview that they planned the the hotel to not have a, a casino in it in las vegas they they planned it that way because well not everybody goes to vegas to gamble in a luxury hotel they that's what 7-eleven and the grocery stores are for i i don't know it just seemed to me to be so uh wishy-washy mr mr fucking slippery i got you know i got three uh, <laughs> i got three bankruptcies in one pending the king of fucking his neighbor out of what he was owed and now he's 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 in the white house <laughs> i wonder if he's selling the white house to anybody behind your backs or anything you know <laughs> selling the furniture off because I heard some of them tried to take it with them like that Hillary girl. She was supposedly, hey, you can't take the silverware, you cheesy bitch. It's not yours. It belongs to the house. Leave it. Leave it. Unhand it. Anyway, <laughs> now you got Trump. Trump. I wonder what Trump's going to do next. I think he's going to attack Iran, really. Is this just a big, you know, sorry about this one. Vinny, but is this is a big, big peacock show? He's out there putting out his cock, so you know everybody will take a pee, be all afraid because you see all the warships coming. What if the what if this shit don't don't go like in, it's supposed to, and these fuckers don't back down? It's not a secret that Russia is an ally of Iran. So if you attack Iran, ooh, you attack Russia. And then there's all these threats like that. That's a threat. And then you got the Jews with, well, if they attack us, America's going to do this. And 
<laughs> so it's kind of amusing in a way, but I mean, it's a war. I should be laughing about a war, but <laughs> goddamn funny if you think about it. Here we are, instant fucking everything at our fingertips, right? All the knowledge that you need is right there on that little box in front of you. Just got to get past Twitter and Google and uh, YouTube and who else now? All the all the big people have all joined forces to hide the truth from, you know, John Average. And they know John Average probably never going to see it any fucking way. But if 10% of us do, hmm. and I, I know the tipping number should be 5%, but for something this big and for what needs to change and how it needs to change, if it's going to change at all, it's going to be violent. There's no, we can't reason our way beyond where we're at now and come out ahead. We'll just end up deeper in the, deeper and deeper in the ass-kissing mode of life. Saying, oh, Mr. Government, will you please put it in my eye instead of my ass? My ass is very sore. Uh, but no. They're in Syria. I thought they were out of this. Wait a minute. This is like fucking already, for crying out loud. One month they're in Syria. The next month they're out of Syria. Then Trump's pulled out of Syria. Now he's put it back into Syria. Poor Syria. You know, and the the Assad brother that got the that got the job. There was brothers. And the, the crazy one is not the one that's sitting in the in the seat. The one that's sitting in the seat is the more reasonable of the two. The other one was more like his father. So this poor guy inherited this fucking, uh, well, curse. This war was coming whether he did anything, didn't do anything. Uh, the Jews are going to get in there and make it fucking happen. They want the Golan Heights. They're going to get the fucking Golan Heights. And if anybody's dare fucking argue about it, that's their fucking land. Blah, 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 blah. More bullshit for us to, you know. Sit back and endure hands bragging about attacking Iran like it's some good fucking thing. Yeah, if anything, maybe he could be on the front line and go over there and poke some uh, Iranian guy in the eye and do us all a favor. Quit talking so much about it. Nope, I'm talking about it too, so wait a minute. But I'm not talking about it in a, like a positive light where it's some kind of a good thing that we should do. But people are so intelligent. You know, we've, um, wow. We've just gone too far with this global, everybody knows the fucking this and the that and the other thing. So, maybe the link that I was reading that Cirque sent me about, uh, you know, the couple that's living wild out in the, wherever she, um, they were going from Europe to Turkey walking. <laughs> Let me go back to the story. I will read some more from this epic Wild at Heart story that my wife Circle said, Hey, I got something for you to read. So we go. When they do bump into another person in the wild, it's usually a hunter and always a man. She thinks that perhaps women have lost their connection with nature. Even more than men. And also, she adds, passionately, why do women have behave so weakly physically? As in, I can't lift that. I can't shit outside. I can't have my period in the bush. She thinks it's a shame women are missing out. Hmm. Well, see, that one man's meat is another man's not meat. Anyway. It seems Miriam is not the only woman to think that women are missing out. Her book is coming out in Britain this month, but is already already published in Holland, where it's become a small sensation. Women write to me and say, you inspired me, she tells me. They're amazed that it's possible to live this primitive life, but they're afraid. What's out there? Well, wait a minute. How is she corresponding on... Oy. She says women worry about being eaten by wild animals or being murdered by a mentally unstable predator like they've seen in Nordic Noir. 
Interestingly, the woman at her readings in Holland, women at her the reading at her readings in Holland are usually aged between 40 and 50. Maybe they are drawn to Miriam's story because they see hers as the alternative life they could have led if only they'd been bolder and conformed less. Oh, please. Younger women still have the big decisions and regrets ahead of them. What do the women who write to her tell her the book inspired them to do? One woman said, You inspired me to get a divorce. <laughs> Even, wait, if you want to be more content, sometimes you have to change your life completely. No, you don't, sir. <laughs> no, I've, I've, you don't know, sir. I'm being funny. Anyway, the seed of their idea was planted in India where they met 12 years ago. Peter, then 52, was a former sheep farmer, <laughs> arborist and university lecturer. And Miriam, then 22, wanted to see the world. <laughs> Together they traveled for a few years before moving to Peter's homeland, New Zealand. In 2010, they sold or gave away most of their possessions and stuck and struck out on their bold off oh, elixir. Hey, cool, Ale. I got it in Espanoli. Ha, ha, ha. Anyway, where was I? I was reading. She brought me the coffee. <clears throat> uh, it struck out on their bold off-grid experiment, roaming and camping in the vast, remote countryside. It was Miriam who carried the big hunting knife and knew how to use their something stump something uh, rifle. Oh, boy. I don't read all that gun stuff. Some kind of foreign rifle. You guys will like it. You gun lovers out there, read that line. It'll make you happy. Without electricity, digital technology, or a watch, the experiment was supposed to last a year. <clears throat> In Europe, it's tricky because you can never get far enough away from people. Grumbles, Peter. Fortunately, we're absolute masters of disappearing into forests. Miriam's gripe is that you can't use or carry a gun in Bulgaria without a license. Otherwise, she would have shot, skinned, and butchered a hare for dinner. They gave me the tour. Their home is a khaki green tubular three-person tent with two sleeping bags in it, sleeping pads, and two rucksacks neatly packed with rudimentary supplies. Food and utensils are arranged on the grass, enamel mugs, a black prospector's plate, which has become partly redundant since they realize that panning gold is the most miserable experience you can have. <clears throat> Miriam shows me her bow and arrow. It is beautifully polished and colossal. It can be quite unpleasant sometimes. It's awful, Peter reminds me. Miriam's earliest awful experience was slaughtering her first animal. A possum. I was vegetarian since birth, but getting weaker and weaker. We were waking up with pains in our stomachs from trying to keep warm. She set a trap, but badly botched killing the possum. While it was happening, she felt sick, and yet the fried possum. Tasted delicious. Later, I felt very proud of myself. She used her bow and arrow to hunt goats. The couple also ate dead deer left behind by hunters. Peter tells me how when English peasants settled in New Zealand, they brought hedgehogs with them. Miriam frowns, but in Britain, there are no wild places left. No. If you're going off-grid, prepping is key. Miriam and Peter spent months training for the first winter in South Marlborough, New Zealand. Long demanding treks, first aid courses, reading, survival, and foraging books, working out by the spoonful exactly how much flour, pulses, tea bags, 
they need. <laughs> they practice seeing in the dark with night walks. Miriam isn't a conspiracy theorist, but she's proud she has now learned survival skills in case of Armageddon. They do sometimes return to civilization to send an email or top up supplies. <clears throat> Or, in Miriam's case, to write a book. <clears throat> Isn't that cheating? Peter disagrees. Because we're living outside society, there are no rules. We can move from the Stone Age to the big city and back. It's a unique combination of primitive living and modern idity. <laughs> what happens if they split up? Miriam says she'd try to find another off-grid partner. Peter phlegmatically says he'll be dead anyway. <laughs> Certainly neither of them wants to return to life of all mod cons. Artificial light is too bright. The noise is too noisy. Sleep is fitful. The food makes them constipated. <laughs> See? The question Miriam often gets asked by her readers is how they can afford to live as they do. We have savings. We live very cheaply on about 5,000 New Zealand dollars a year. Food, basically. But she wanted to write her book for other reasons, to show that in the 21st century, a different way of living is possible. One in which long-term relationships can work. A lot of people write, I am so happy to read that at least someone is living harmoniously. <laughs> A married couple spending 24 hours together. I've been married twice before, says Peter cynically. Although Miriam likes Peter's worldliness, her only other serious boyfriend wanted the big house and kids. She doesn't. <laughs> she thinks the key to a good relationship is a desire for self-knowledge. If he says something and I see it as an insult, then I think, ah, why do I see that? as an insult. I use it as a reflective method to find out about myself. We refuse to fight, adds Peter. When he annoys her, says Miriam, I pretend not to listen. Doesn't living in these physical circumstances force dependence? We call it independence. Interdependence, exclaims, explains Peter. Sometimes under extreme stress, we do get a bit snappy. For example, let's see where I lost my place. <laughs> Sorry, guys. When they both nearly drowned in some New Zealand rapids, Miriam, what? Okay, when they both, that was the, ex uh, that was it. Miriam completes the thought. Okay, so you become more aware of how external factors affect your mood. The book hints that there is an open relationship, but I'm not sure how that can make much difference, given they never meet anyone. <laughs> uh, that's priceless. Okay. Let me light up here, folks. I'm enjoying this. I hope you guys aren't bored of this. This story is kind of making me giggle, because uh, I... I don't work, and I so now I'm I'm not the breadwinner, the big head cheese guy in this house. I'm second banana. <laughs> but there you go. What can you say? They'd like to meet some Roma in Bulgaria to exchange nomad experiences. Don't the poor feel patronized by their experiment? No, it's the middle classes who don't like us, says Peter, especially men. A lot of my old friendships are breaking down because of it. Most men my age are already boogered. They can't sleep on the ground. They're fat. They can't walk for long. They're envious. Mostly they're envious of her, he says, looking at his wife. They want to know how to do it, as in how to marry a woman 30 years younger. The age gap can be difficult to ignore. Miriam mentions it several times in her book, mainly because other people keep bringing it up. For them, it isn't an issue. Although, would Peter really be here with a woman his own age? I have never met a woman in her 60s who wants to live as I do, he says. Hmm. Miriam and Peter often use the word trap to describe how other people live. 
They never intend to have children and rely on another modern in innovation, Miriam's IUD, to make sure they don't. They say it would be impossible to live in the wild with kids, so are kids a trap? For, is, for us, it would be a trap, says Miriam. You have to have a regular income. You have to settle down, she laughs. It scares me just thinking about it. <laughs> Miriam describes how men, how men they do meet on their travels will meet oftenly, will meet, will often suddenly open up about their personal lives. <laughs> I couldn't read that line. <laughs> They say they wish their wives would come out hunting with them, or if they had a choice again, they would never have children. That was the end of their freedom, they say. She looks at Peter. We met one guy. Do you remember him? He said, I can't wait for my children to be old enough to leave the house. And I said, oh, how old are they? And he said, three and five. <laughs> oh, there, <laughs> there was a pilot who told her, he had recurring fantasies of pushing his wife out of his helicopter. Peter's theory is modern civilization, the suburban life, just doesn't suit men's nature. It leaves men feeling constantly unchallenged. I'd say a third of the population are seriously unhappy. He finds it startling that, with the advances in birth control, the majority of women still choose to have children. I have met so many interesting women in their 20s, then along comes 30, and they succumb to the pressure. You think, why do you, did you do nothing else with your life? Wow. Mm. Heavy on the judgment. No matter what side you're judging them, they're judging you. It's all, eh, it's all the same shit. The real problem, thinks Peter, is that everyone's too obsessed with security to the point where it interferes with their ability to think logically or find happiness. Yeah, he might be right with that. People say to us, we're living their dream, and I say to them, do it. But they say, oh, I can't. And I say, what do you mean you can't? Of course you can't. And they look a bit confused by that statement because it's true. Maybe I say it's because they'd prefer a more temporary break with society. Once you've opted out of your career, sold all your stuff, there's no return. Ha, ha, ha. And that, he says with satisfaction, is exactly the point. Miriam nods in agreement because once you've cut that cut with that boring, unhappy life, I can guarantee that you'll never want to go back. Oh, there's still more. I'm done. Am I done? Ah, nah, that's it. I, I'm finished with that. Thanks, Circles, for the story to read on the RealLibertyMedia.com on 20% off. I felt like reading the link. Now, I'll get back to my heavy insights on the inner workings of the modern-day mind. You know, because we're just vibrating like a bunch of weirdos these days. Man, this is terrible. I wonder what's going on. Does anybody know? Hmm. Ah, Vinny took off. Hey, Vincenzo. Hey, I do it to you all the time. Hmm. Hmm. A new black serial killer... Grim or an old says suspected serial killer nar now charged in deaths of 12 women I was just saying Tuesday you know it's been a while since we've had one of those wacky serial killers surface how many years has it been since uh, you hear about these um, like the drills the gun drills at the schools where they got the fake shootings but they pass that off as real but all through all that where were all the serial killers? Now, I guess they're done with the school shooting bullshit. Now they're going to go back to serial killers. Eh, it's probably just that wiener guy got out of jail and they found a couple of girls for him to party with. Ha 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 Never mind. Hey, he's a hardened prisoner now. He spent time in the federal pen, baby. That's where all the bad fellas go to be punished for their crimes against society. <laughs> Because, you know, <laughs> you owe society a, a debt. Just figure out what that means sometime. Hmm. Now, I would resort to my buddy Grimnir for this one. But Grimnir, is a debt both moral and financial? Or is a debt 
just financial. I think they're both. I think they can be considered both. Hmm. But that debt to society crap always made ooh, always made my tumor just wiggle. I could feel my head just start twitching. <laughs> I said what ten years ago? Oh, you're not talking to me, right, Miss Kate? No, they're chitter chattering on the RLM, and I take everything personal and think it's all about me because I'm doing the radio. Anyway, what was on my mind? What is on my mind? You know, have you ever noticed the directions versus the results? Because I already talked, let's see, I talked about the bank, talked about inoculations. Try to find an interesting way to present this particular idea. Um, it's like the television set, right? You have a TV set, and you turn it on, you got, now we've got remotes. But back in the day, things were a lot simpler. You had a television set, you had to walk up to it, hello to, and address it, hello television, and it had a knob that you pushed or pulled or something, and then the TV came on. It was like, wow, TV, no TV. And if you ever had one of those days where you pushed the button and nothing happened, the TV didn't work, well, there was a fella that was a TV repairman because most of us, we don't look at something and f need the directions right down to how it was made, how it works, what it's made out of. Not everybody thinks that way. Uh, they've got us by the nuts pretty much with that concept, right? Because the directions versus the results is, uh, hmm. I guess that's a personal experience. Uh, if you've ever bought something that you needed to assemble from, an, um, from a manufacturer and had any kind of difficulty with the directions because the directions seem to be written in a foreign language or something, welcome to the world because the world's like that. Manufacturers have this gift for creating shit that can't be repaired after you buy it. If it breaks, you're fucked, it's done. Throw it out and get another one because this one is cooked. And uh, they're affordable. So if you're not wealthy and you can afford to buy expensive toys to cook with and to uh, entertain yourself with and to power yourself with. I'm sure that there's got to be some people with money that know about baking soda, you know? I mean, look at all the look at all the movie stars that supposedly die of cancer. Now, I don't know, do they? Do they really die of cancer? Do they even really die? What about that? <laughs> Who put that link up about the space shuttle that exploded? And then uh, a couple years later, the people, well, maybe more than a couple, but the people that were supposedly killed in this freaking thing were found all over the United States holding different jobs, and some of them didn't even change their name, and but most of them did. And there's this big list, and it t tells you this guy and that guy and the blah, 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 and her and where, and who, who they are now and where they live. Well... What was the point of the all that space shuttle exploding? W what purpose did that serve? You know, it's just like the moon, <laughs> the moon landing. <laughs> you know, if they, we didn't have that gas station on the moon to get back, we would have really been fucked. You know, because does anybody ever account for how much fuel it would have took to get to the moon and back? Fuel alone, just fuel. Oh, they were using their future uh, nuclear devices that hadn't been invented yet. But they were using them because nothing else would explain going to the freaking moon and back. <laughs> I even read some stuff about, at the time when uh, all this crap was going on, the Russians were the ones that were supposedly in uh, the lead with the kind of rockets and, and engines and all this shit that it takes to do whatever these things do. And here's the part that really irritates me. 
Now, if they're all privy to the same freaking question, you know, I'm looking to find out how to do this. This is what I mean by the results and the directions don't match somehow. All right, so we're going to go to the moon, and we're going to put this big performance on, and we're going to go there and back, but we're not going to explain where the fuel came from for the return of the trip. And hopefully we can just keep people not even thinking about that. Let's... We'll tell them everything. We'll tell them it was fake before the, we'll let them think about, hey, there wasn't enough fuel to do the job. <laughs> now, here we are in the 21st century, and still, nobody's wondering, hey, once they go out there, how are they going to get the fuck back? They got enough fuel to get there. Well, they'll just stop at the, you know, Exxon station and fill it. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they'll just use their... Uh, Nuclear power packs. I don't know. Some kind of bullet. They'll con us. I've been watching old um, sci-fi movies. I was doing that today when I was working on my puzzle. And uh, listening to the dialogue. Not really just sitting there watching the film. But the slapstick of it now. But when you think about in the time that they did these things. And all these terms and ideas that they're making. Uh, entertainment of space travel. And going to Mars. And. Frankenstein meets the badass from Mars. All kinds of stupid shit, right? Well, hmm. this is not going to be a very nice thing to say, but it doesn't seem any more real to me than, say, religion or education or government. Those four things, they're all manipulated by psychos. Psychos and crazy people. You know, look at the results of it all. Where are we at? We got... We've got Donald Trump and and P what's his first fucking name? Pence. I don't even know what his fucking first name is. I lost Pence's first name. But he's going to be the POTUS someday, so you should, probably should get his first name and tattoo it on your hand. That way when the police come, they won't arrest you for not being loyal to him. And I heard that certain people have a shotgun prepared just for that situation coming to their home and uh, i don't know i'm not a naysayer or a doomsday seer but phew, it doesn't look very good i would say you know after that boston what was that boston marathon bombing bullshit and then they went house to fucking house with military saw all the people backing up hey no you ain't coming to my house no go away mr military everybody said sure come on in look around do what you want don't shoot me. And, uh, of course, I did a, re uh, I read a story about an anniversary of the 15th of a bombing in Philadelphia by the Philadelphia PD and their agents where they found it necessary to completely destroy this whole area. And the people that were the victims of the crime of being murdered weren't pussies and you know they weren't innocent victims and all that kind of shit and that's but the firepower of uh, closing it down <laughs> that's why I've always said hey man you have all the guns you fucking want but they'll get better guns these people when uh, oh jeez when uh, in the I think it was uh, the middle middle to the, the end of the 90s there was a bank in the in the valley, in the San Fernando Valley, that got robbed by two guys armed to their freaking teeth, and they had body armor from head to toe, this, that, and the other. It took the cops. They had to go to the pawn shops to get better guns than they had to fight these two guys that were robbing a bank. And they had a big gunfight. And we finally, they shot him in the ankle, the one guy in the parking lot. And they got him, uh, he was outside the vehicle, He's trying to steal something else, I guess, and they finally they shot him in the in the, in the somewhere that was exposed. I think his aunt, his ankle, and in the long run, his family was actually trying to sue them, uh, the police and the paramedics for not uh, going up and helping him immediately because he'd been shot. <laughs> he he's shooting on people for like an hour, but hey, the, nobody wanted to go near him to help him because he was down, and who knows, maybe he was faking it.
at the time. How do you know? But uh, I went to live in that particular area of uh, the valley because I'd heard about the <laughs> I'd heard about the robbery, and it was a it was the people that lived there that had been through it pretty much had the same story that the news carried about what they saw and what happened, and it was just wow. But the the thing that was the most weird about it was that the cops used that bank robbery as a, an excuse to get better arms. And they're using those arms against us because how many times do you hear about a bank robbery like that? So, hmm, my question. Could that have been staged by the very fucking people that claim, you know, they're here to help us? I don't know. I don't trust... I don't trust what I see or what I hear anymore, pretty much. I mean, the big things, not the little, th like an encounter in person is one thing, but reading stuff on uh, the internet, or, oh, the the big boats are going to Iran to protect Israel. Now, 90% sure that's real. That's really happening. <clears throat> what I'm not sure about, why it's happening. Oh, I know that, Miss Kate. Bolton's been drooling over... I'm right, but I'm not in touch with people or communicate with many people in the world about the uh, political war shit. I don't really... Hmm. There's no... <clears throat> there's no convincing me that any reason that you can explain to me is worthy of war. War is bullshit. I think the leader should just face the fuck off live on TV and just no holds barred. Kill one, one of you kill the other one, and I, I'll bet you money that it wouldn't go that far. They'd go, wait a minute, uh, well, kill you, huh? Hmm. What if you kill me? Hmm. That cowardice side of, you know, the egomaniacs in power that want to send other people to croak. I think that would surface. You know, not everybody's a George S. Patton, and they take their freaking 45 and shoot at planes passing over over them that are bombing them but <laughs> i seen a movie or two but the point is i suppose through all this is we're doing everything just fucking backwards you know and i've read people like mary miss mary Graham, uh, Graham Z. she's got a similar outlook on on this that i have she might not go to the same extremes that i that i would go to but I think we agree on the leave the people the fuck alone. You know, if you want to have a war, why don't you guys go have your war and leave us the fuck out of your war? How about we have the banker war? Hmm? 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 What? Bank of America versus Goldman Sachs. Like a wrestling thing, only none of that fake shit. We don't see blood and broken bones. You can't stay in there until we do. I bet bankers would like start quitting overnight no i don't want to do this job no more yeah let's do it the animal way and if you want to be the top dog in your profession you have to eat the liver of your opponent live on tv <laughs> so, it's coming to that any damn way I and mean, they're running out of ways to make up excuses for why there's no money wait a minute yeah there's lots of money here look at all this stuff happening blah 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 no, the stuff is happening. The money is just a game to keep you amused. And if you're amused by it, well, it's working. And if you're not amused by it, hmm, because, uh, well, me and Miss Mary were amused by it. Saw a link she showed us today. And uh, Cirque told me this a long time ago, so it wasn't news to me. But guess who owns Bitcoin? Through trickery and deceit, they're going to get their way. And it's uh, uh, so so technical and buried underneath all the bullshit that it's hard to see it and accept it. Because the reality is going to and You're going to get the reality at the end of your transaction, not at the beginning of it. You're in the promissory stage, promissory note part of it now. Try collecting on shit and see what happens. That's when the game changes. Because freaking uh, intrusive governments, they want their fucking cut of everything we do. And if we're doing it, they want 18 to 35% by God and country. 
And if you don't give it to them, they're going to put you in jail. And they do that here, too, I think. But, see, is that beautiful idea right there that just makes me feel uh, the road that I've chose to travel is perfect for everybody involved in my life. And some people don't think so. <laughs> well, that's all right. I see I got judgment about other people myself based on my opinion of the crap that they write on the Internet, too. So I would say we are we are vibrating on the wrong frequencies and we're paying dearly for it in the long run because all the negative time I spend is wasted and it's fueling that freaking beast. And I'm addicted to it just like the next idiot. I ain't no better than you. I know that. It's not about being better or worse. It's about being decent. You know, there's a, I use bad language and I tell colorful jokes and personal stories and I talk about my opinion about people and shit. But hmm, that's not the same as physical action. Or maybe to take it a step further, it's not the same frequency as supporting a war verbally out loud so people can hear you say it. Type in it. Type in it for people to read it. It carries some weight. You know, as I get older, I don't hang around in uh, in chat rooms with a lot of young folk. Most of the people in the real liberty media dot com are adults, adult age. Some a little younger than me, some a little older than me. The hmm, the general consensus, less like three or four people, is pretty much the same. And then you got a few outsiders that like to stir up shit but uh eh, getting along or not getting along doesn't change the fact that if your world sucks it ain't it's you it ain't us we're we're in the real liberty media.com we ain't do nothing to anybody we're just talking and uh, typing shit having a little fun pointing out this side pointing out that side calling a calling a nigger a nigger in a world where you can't say nigger because people think that that's a separation of color. It's a separation of character. And to be really, uh, well, controlling, I suppose. Society figured out a way to, to put one race and title them nigger. Well, it kind of let everybody else off the hook. But if you do this over a course of generations... At the end, most people don't know what the fuck you're talking about anyway. And you can't say that. Freedom, baby. We've got that freedom of speech going on here. Don't tell me I can't say that. I can say anything I can live with. Oh, okay. We have to remove Grimnir. Don't include me in our. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, I don't know who he's talking to, but I like responding to Grimnir because he's funny. Now, when he's talking to me, he'll usually put my name in there to catch my attention. Because he knows how badly I read the chat and talk at the same time. I've given it a whirl. But uh, over the time. Anyway, I come up with this other one. I think when the state learns that they can charge you for breaking the laws of physics... I think we're in real trouble now when that happens. And don't forget, folks, I'm the one that predicted sperm tax. And we had a, a report of a sperm tax on a docket at some court. I don't think it got um, made it to a bill, but hey, they're trying to get it there. So this is my next prediction for the future. Uh, 20% off. You've heard it here first, folks. And well... Define the laws of physics, give it to a judge, and I'll bet you he could find a lot of nice ways to find and tax and regulate your ass into a cell. Just give them a few days. But anyway, wait, wait a minute. I think they did that with global warming. Hey, maybe I'm just, I'm a, could I be a whistleblower? Uh-oh. Hmm. I don't want to be a whistleblower. <laughs> 
wait a minute, maybe I do. Uh, hmm. Well, the laws of physics shall not be broken. But the word of law, you can do what you like with that for a fee. Okay, I don't really know where to take that, but just made me laugh when I thought of it. I was playing around with the color of law, and, the, and then I saw somebody write the laws of physics, and I put them together, which is pretty much what I do. I take obscure ideas and mesh them. Sometimes they come out with a funny, and sometimes a not-so-funny. <coughs> yeah, Grim, I caught that. I was see When you're talking to me, you put my name there, and he says, Grimnir, Flash, I was replying to this, Gooberzilla. This ain't our government, hasn't been since 1946, or 1933, or 1870, depending on what a person's knowledge is. Well, why not go back to 1770 fucking 5, when it all started? There you go. How about the whole thing has been a sham since it started? It's never been anything but a sham the whole time we've been in it. We get told one thing and something else happens, so... Hmm. You believe what you want. What day it started doesn't fucking matter at all. What matters is that people start admitting that what they have needs to end. And where I live, that ain't going to happen. Oh, no, 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 no. Sadly, I have no input into the future whatsoever. Period. Zero. So, but I do have my uh, radio time so I can put my opinion out there in the in the galaxy and to the world and let people know what I think. And sometimes, I don't know, sometimes I don't really care. And other times, I care a great deal. But the end result, hmm, the formula is so obvious to me and I, I don't see why, uh, maybe because the violence has been so uh, orchestrated over the last 30 years. The only violence since uh, Kent State that you've really seen in the public eye, it's always controlled by the government. Riots, still government. Things that were allowed to do, government. News, they tell you what they want to tell you. So you never know what the fuck happened across the street. You're hearing a story, unless you were across the street. And then if you were across the street, you wouldn't be needing to be told what happened there. It would have happened. But we all got to know what's going on behind every bush, under every... Oh, it's ridiculous, man. Doesn't anybody just take a fucking walk anymore? I mean, even the girl, she's out there with a guy 30 years older than her, living in the fucking weeds because they like it. And they even understand, hey, yeah, we're going to get on each other's nerves every once in a while. That's the nature of life. So what? You get over it. And they do. Well, that's kind of the recipe that me and my wife use. Because, hey, we're different. And especially me and Cirque. God damn. Her, man, her eyes roll still. She does I don't know how she takes me seriously or not. Or I don't even know if I'm serious. But I just say, yeah, spinning globe. Yeah, traveling through space. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm going to do that with a tennis ball in the backyard. Let me get, where's that water at? <laughs> and, <laughs> you, you know, how, how come... It's too hard to explain is what, what the whole thing boils down to me because my body has got supposedly billions of cells inside it or trillions or zillions or some something like a Google, whatever, some fucking number. And each of those cells is independent of all the other cells. So a cell at the bottom of my foot would never know there was another cell at the top of my head. How could it? I mean, as far as seeing it, it would have to be sent a message. So I stub my toe into a table, and all of a sudden my brain goes, Hey, stupid, you just stubbed your toe on the table. Aren't you watching where you're going? <laughs> so, hmm, there's communication between my foot and my head. But, wow, I don't really care what's going on in Copenhagen right now. And that's only, what, 40, 40 kilometers or something from here. But I don't... I don't think about out there all that much. I'm directed to think about all out there by what I read. Because there that's what the catalyst is. What difference would it make? Then don't listen if I don't make no sense, Mr. Fucking Know-It-All. 
You're the one that thinks that there's such a thing as fucking space travel. It's a bunch of crap. Suckered into all kinds of dumb shit because people want to make fucking money. Just insane. Uh oh, Beetle's going to beat up his car. Don't hit me. I'm just the car. But hey, Goober, you, you enjoy yourself, Mr. Blow him out of the sky to solve climate, you know, whatever that was. Uh, chemtrails. I don't know. We just all see things differently. That's what, I, that's what I've been made aware of. But, you know, you got the right crook for the right crime in every area of life. Doing exactly what criminals do right all over you. Day in and day out. And, you know, it's getting to be like terrible things. Snitches are part of the American way. Expose and uh, what's all this? Like, investigate. Fuck, whatever happened to, you know, figure out what your problem is, identify the problem, and then find out who did that. No, they just go, look, they open up a door and find a problem in the room and then call that a crime and judge it. Wow, what a mess. I hope you guys are happy with uh, whatever part of the shit storm you're in. I'm I'm doing okay. Me and Sir, we're, we made it through another day here in Denmark. And it's really a good time to be alive in life because it's happening to me now. Couldn't find a better time than the one I'm in at the moment. And with that, I'm going to end my ranty 20% off podcast. This has been Flash. Thanks a lot for hanging out with me, everybody. Even you, Mr. Uh, Disagreeable Old Goober. But I never know if you're drinking or not. Sometimes you get a little crazy when you start drinking. And it is hard to read the damn um, chat when I'm ranting on my great ideas. Well, there's one I agree with. Is John Bolton needs to be shut, you know, shut in a dark room with a cold piece of steel <sighs> for a long time. But I guess that's just my vicious side surfacing. I'll back down now. <laughs> you, you possessed by Bolton. Oh, Beetle. <laughs> anyway, we got coming up on the... RLM tomorrow at 7 o'clock on the East. Oh, Vinny. <laughs> Ponder Gander. Hey, Vinny. No, Vinny split. I, I'll just give him credit for a 1 o'clock Ponder Gander tomorrow on the East Coast of the USA. 1 p.m. Uh, and then 7 o'clock is Graham Z with the Rocket Chair podcast. And then at 11, with or without Moose, I'm not sure she was off um, with music, I think last week, but I think she's back this week. So you got Grimner and Moose Girl doing the Freakers Ball. And Saturday, I come back at noon with the Dork Table, where all the greatest minds of the 20th century gather to tell you where we went wrong. Uh, Sunday morning, Grimner wakes us up with the blues. Then we play trivia try to answer all these questions and be all fast typing and shit it's hard i'm telling you there's some there's some competition on the rlm uh, you'll see four fucking people answer the same thing right within one second of each other but we're on that computer thing so whoever you know this is down like the tenth of a second of entering your answer it's pretty cool for the nerd and the dork out there in the uh entertainment world then three o'clock on the west coast you got hal anthony comes from behind the woodshed and monday seven o'clock on the east coast grimner comes back with grim leftovers with uh all the stuff that he didn't get to on friday night on the freakers ball then well maybe not all of it but he reads a few things that he can get in on monday night then tuesday should Vincent return, we'll have in a perfect world. And me and Vinny are going to argue the do's and don'ts of, well, things on Tuesday at 1 o'clock on the East Coast. And then Wednesday, Graham Z comes back with a podcast, the Rocket Chair podcast, by the way, at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night on the East Coast. And then next week, same bat time. Same bat channel, 2 o'clock on the east coast of the USA. I'll do 20% off. Thank you for playing along with me tonight. Roger Wilco, over and out.